call the meeting to order. It's 7 o'clock of the Colchester Planning Commission, January 3rd. So, agenda considerations reserved for changes to the agenda items and order. We're all set. Good. I just yes. want to add a quick welcome. Yep, to I was going to do that right now. You want to do that? Too, you do it. Go ahead. Are you sure? <laughs> oh, yeah. Jump right in. So, I just want to add a quick welcome to Amy. Amy is newest member of the Planning Commission. She was appointed uh, late December, I suppose. Wow. Um, so she's sort of getting thrown right in <laughs> with her first packet this past weekend. So. Yeah. I'd like to make a note to the, change the agenda. The date is 2022. Oh, <laughs> that always happens, happens at least once. <laughs> Good catch. That is bound to happen. Right yes. out of the gate, good job. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, welcome. It's very exciting to have a full board again. Oh my God. It's been a while. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I will make a note so it's accurate on our website. All right, so we go on. Comments and questions from the public not related to the agenda. We're good there. So number four, discuss, discuss draft amendments to the Colchester Development Regulation Supplement 45. Okay. Take it away. Can I just ask, how, how do I get connected to the internet? I, uh, I, it we, usually happens automatically. Oh, it's not connecting automatically. It should be Colchester with a capital C. I'll give you guys a few minutes if you need to. Mine went automatic. Huh. So just as a quick note, um, and I don't remember if I've told Amy this, we do have iPads for the commissioners. They're being changed over and updated. Um, so hopefully by the next meeting, I'll have one for Amy and one for Wendy. Um, I did finally snag one out of Bob's hands. <laughs> I just need to get my hands on a second one. Um, but yes, if you need to get on. Also, we, can you see from that seat? Can you see the TV okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and I can make it anytime you want to zoom in on anything. Okay. Um, happy to make it bigger. What's, is the password just Colchester with a capital yeah. C? Okay. Let me know if that doesn't work for yeah. you. Thank you. Okay. So as a quick introduction here, um, I've been sort of previewing these to you for a couple meetings. The, um, the text here is not necessarily anything groundbreaking. Uh, but there's a lot of it, and so it's going to take us a little time to go through all of them. Um, congratulations to you if you did follow along through the entirety of the text and find where everything was. Um, we did try to at least put the section numbers in here so you could find them that way. So, bear with me. I'm actually going to open a Word version of this just in case there's changes. We can just make them while you see them. Um, as I put in the memo, the goal is that hopefully by the next meeting, you will have a complete package that you can consider warning for a public hearing um, probably at the end of February or early March. So no pressure to take any votes on these tonight. Um, Amy, we don't typically run through updates this quick, um, but the wastewater uh, regulations are under sort of more of a time crunch than usual. Um, Colchester has been a delegation community um, for more than a decade, I suppose. Um, in December, the select board voted to um, cease that delegation um, and has notified the state of that. Um, the ordinance to do so would take effect April 1st. So we're trying to get our regulations um, in line as close to possible as that April 1st date so that we don't have anything in our regulations that references a chapter um, out of our code of ordinances that is not aligned. Um, it doesn't really matter that much if we're just ahead or just behind, but we're trying to be as close as possible so that we don't have conflicting regulations um, on the books. Um, just as a quick reminder, when we do do regulatory updates, um, the process is that we will consider them until you're comfortable. 
you will then um, make a vote if you are to warn them for a public hearing. The public hearing has to be at least 15 days later than your vote. It tends to be closer to 30 because of the way that we have to warn them in the paper um, and notify other communities. Then you'll have a vote. If you take a vote on it that evening, your vote is to forward those to the select board for review. Select board at one meeting will receive them and then they can either hear them again at another meeting or they can immediately warn a public hearing um, for themselves, typically about 30 days later. Um, so that could put us close to the April timeline if, if all goes smoothly. Okay, let me dig right in. Um, there are a few spaces here that I think are less about just hitting on text and um, can you also explain for the new members too what you do one. to show the changes you made for color yes underlying. I've opened the wrong one here let's see okay. I'm sorry I guess I don't have the I don't have the word version that I thought I did so we'll go through the ones that you have in your packet um, Okay, so we're going to start with A here. Um, this will be the bulkiest section. This is related to the water and wastewater. Okay. Um, actually, we'll go through my list here. We'll start with 204 and 205. Can you do page numbers too? Yes, hopefully your page numbers will align with mine. Um, so 204 is found on article two, page four. In your PDF, that is page nine of the PDF, if that helps. That's where we are here. This one's very boring, it just changes chapter eight um, to the state of Vermont Environmental Protection Rules, Chapter 1. That's state wastewater rules. So you'll see this a lot. We're just replacing our reference, our regulations with the state ones. Holler at me if I'm going at any point too fast. Do you want me to slow down or have a question? Okay, so now we are on Article 2, page 7 of the PDF. That's page 12. Um, so these have to do with setbacks, um, but they connect to chapter eight. So all we've done there is remove anything related to chapter eight. Um, we can't regulate setbacks from your wastewater infrastructure if we don't regulate the wastewater infrastructure, essentially what it says. Okay. Scrolling down. Uh, this one I think we're actually gonna come back to. This here, or we could do it now since we're going in order if you'd prefer. This is item C. This is a request while we're talking about public infrastructure that came from the Department of Public Works. Um, it looks, let me just do it since we're here. Yeah. Okay, so again, this is under item C. Um, this says that, it, it says exactly, you know, what it, what it reads that temporary uses or structures um, can't be within 10 horizontal feet of existing underground public infrastructure. Um, portable trailers for construction, porta potties. This isn't regulating new construction of buildings or existing construction of buildings. But if you have a temporary structure, you got to keep it 10 feet away from underground public infrastructure so that we're not having to go through expensive or messy movement of, of anything. I think it's pretty. Um, a pretty low bar. Um, okay. Um, oh, sorry, Rich, to get back to what you said, red, any strike through is a removal of text. It does show up in here in two colors because we had two staff members work on it. I apologize. Red was me. <laughs> and then as some other staff members joined in, it started to show up in blue. Um, but they both mean the same. 
Um, so anywhere you see a strike through is a removal of text. Um, a replacement of text tends to show up in green in here. I don't think that we have any that was sort of cut and pasted elsewhere, but I'll point it out if there is. Anything underlined but not struck through is new text. Okay. Moving along. That's why I like the colors, catches the eyes. Okay. Potable water supply um, has been entirely removed. Um, I keep saying wastewater, but the state environmental rules also covers potable water. Um, so it's removed. I did add reserved in there. I'm not entirely sure why it says B. It'll probably just be for the whole section. This just saves us from having to renumber everything after. So at some point, actually, I'm going to make a note. It looks like the A is there. Yeah, the number has to change, and so does the, the potable water supply will also be struck out. It'll just say 2.14 reserved. Sorry, I don't have my word version here. So imagine in your mind, what you will see is everything struck out. It will simply say 2.14 reserved. Okay. 2.14. 15, wastewater disposal. Um, so there's still some pieces that will remain under review from our local Department of Public Works um, that talk about how you're placing your infrastructure. Um, but again, we've removed anything related to Chapter 8 of the Code of Ordinances, replaced that with State of, Envir State of Vermont Environmental Protection Rules. Again, Chapter 1. It's in blue only because it was added by a different staff member. It wasn't specific enough. Uh, cross district sewage also removed. We have will have no authority over that. Let me make that a little bigger. We'll have no authority over that once we no longer have delegation. Okay, it's exciting stuff. I know. <laughs> So new text here, 2.19, uh, if you're following along, it's Article 2, page 27, uh, page 32 of the PDF. Um, this is again 10 feet of no new land development um, related to um, public infrastructure. Um, anybody who has ever seen a pipe in the ground knows you don't just put it straight down to get to it. If you don't want the soil to collapse, you need to sort of dig in from the sides. Having 10 feet gives room to get to a pipe safely um, and hopefully not destroy anybody's property that they've built afterwards. Um, so that's really all that is saying there. Again, these were at the request of our Public Works Department. Okay. Cruising along. There's one. Uh, just removing reference to Chapter 8. Doesn't change the requirement, though, about um, encroaching into setbacks. That is in the Lakeshore District. Uh, same thing here on page Article 3, page 6. Just removing reference to Chapter 8. going through these fast but this is probably going to be our next conversation this is all of the form based code stuff here in this chapter it's <coughs> pretty bulky let's see ah. okay this one looks a little different um, so I am on Article 4, 
page 19. That's page 60 of the PDF. We are under Lakeshore 1, okay? So, as part of our conversations last summer about Lakeshore 3 and 4, we had a conversation about rebuilding in the footprint and how long that could take. Um, the commission ultimately decided to make that five years. Um, we noted at the time that the Lakeshore 1 and 2 districts were listed as having 10 years of rebuilding. Um, but we didn't want to touch anything there at the time. So because so much of this section is already being changed, I just wanted to flag it to check in with you guys and give you some options. You can leave 10 years. This is again, if you tear down and rebuild after you've torn it down, this would give you 10 years to rebuild that. Um, options include leaving it at 10 years, choosing five years to be consistent with what was done on East Lakeshore Drive for Lakeshore three and four. Again, Lakeshore one, is the lake side of West Lakeshore Drive, okay, water side. Um, a third option you might have, if I understand correctly about what some of the reasoning behind 10 years was, is you could say uh, that 10 years is allocated for any properties that were demolished before the date of adoption of Supplement 45, but going forward. So if anybody did tear down thinking that they had 10 years, they would still have those 10 years. But going forward, if somebody were to tear down, um, um, you know, sort of the, the yacht club that's over there, they would only have five years to rebuild. So under this, they have 10. Um, most of the rest of the town is one year. Um, Lakeshore three and four along East Lakeshore Drive is five years. So you, you'd have to follow the current regulations, which is almost impossible in those districts because almost everything is within the shoreland overlay um, of 250 feet or in the floodplain. Um, so most properties on the lake side of West Lakeshore and East Lakeshore really benefit by having this ability to rebuild in their footprint, even if the footprint is um, not something that would be permissible to be built today. Um, so basically it just it grandfathers them for what they already have. Um, if you wait too long, you would lose that. Um, the advantage to the town is that at some point, if you've gone, a, the idea is that if you've gone a certain amount of time without rebuilding it, um, and regulations have changed, thoughts have changed. Um, Lakeshore three and four, for example, has changed considerably in terms of what's allowed. Um, is 10 years too long to allow that to be rebuilt? And I bring this one to you with absolutely no professional direction. Um, well, I'm still in favor of the 10 year for this particular area. Because I definitely want them to be rebuilt if they can. It takes, in commercial world, everything's so slow moving and they kind of like to go with the times. I personally would like to leave it at 10 years, but I'm open, yep. I just have two questions. Uh, do you know what the tax implications are for either leaving a building up or tearing it down? And then would there be any benefit to tie it into the town plan, like when the, you know, at all? Um, well, it's probably already tied into the town plan just because everything that we write in our regulations has to align with that. Mm -hmm. um, didn't pull this chapter specifically, but I could look into it if you find yourselves in any sort of a split vote. Mm -hmm. um, the tax implications, I'm, I'm really not sure. Um, when you hit the ground, hmm? when, once it hits the ground, you have open land. There's yeah, I mean, it, land, right, I, right. I would guess that the a lot of it- here is once it hits the ground and nobody builds, it's gonna be dead land. Right. Right. Because you mean, can't well, rebuild because of this unique situation here. Mm -hmm. I don't think that's very fair to the property owner. That's what my concern is too. Not, 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 not only that, I think the amenities that it brings to the bay are important. 
Mm -hmm. you know, and like I, I'm thinking at five years we would begin to be able to tax that property, right? But 10 years, we're losing 10 years or at least five years of Yeah, until you're right. It'll tax. have a different use. Right. That's correct. Right. Yeah, I don't know. I mean, I know that taxation will often consider what the potential of a property mm -hmm. is. But I don't know much more than that as to how how much it gets considered. <laughs> um, obviously, a half acre of vacant land that sits on the lake is inherently more valuable, whether it's vacant or not, than a half acre of land that exists probably in some other areas of town. But I, I don't know how much different. Is it um, like the potential every year it's reassessed, I mean, or reevaluated? Because I'm assuming in 10 years it's going to be a very different Yeah, amount. I understand that there's different trigger points. Obviously, the town does its own reassessments on some sort of cycle. Um, mm -hmm. Anytime there's a permit, our tax office does get notified. So if there is a demolition, they would know about it. Mm -hmm. So monthly, we export to them and say, here's our permits. They look through them and say, oh, boy, this person put in a $1 million renovation. They're probably going to take note of that. Um, or if there is a demolition. So they would get notice of that, provided the person did do a permit. Um, I th believe that they may also consider um, reevaluations at time of sales, but definitely don't quote me on that. Okay. I'd say barely educated guess, um, but I, okay. I don't know. Tell me your uh, rationale for allowing 10 years again. I think it takes time. Well, there's a piece of property right now that's had the old hotel on it. Mm -hmm. It's been taken down, and they're not really sure what they want to do with it. But I hate to see that property go dead when a great idea shows up. Mm -hmm. and it takes, in the commercial world, just from the idea to concept can take years before you even break ground. And I hate to see them lose any of that. The whole idea of this was to keep the bay vibrant. Mm -hmm. So I think we need amenities where we can, mm -hmm. and there's not a lot of properties left. And there's no doubt once it becomes dead, it's dead. I mean, there's they're so close to the lakeshore, there's nothing they can do with that property again. Yep. That's there's, there is an that old hotel. hotel. What's that? There's an old hotel. In there was. West you know where the uh, moorings is? If you look yeah. to the water or Hazlitt's, right across the street, there's an open parking lot. That was a little hotel. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. I remember that now. Remember okay. that now? Yeah, oh, yeah it's, I remember it, that now. It disappears yeah, the, so quick. And then the you, Harbor yeah. Hotel. Or yeah, something. that's right. Yeah, yeah. 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 That's okay. pretty dilapidated house. Yeah, it's all it was. Yeah. Yeah. Falling apart. Yeah. So that's been years. vacant, I mean, mm -hmm. for a long time. Yeah. Has it, that's has what it, has it been 10 years? No. Yes. They would have so to build as though for they were. That's all? Four or five, yeah. If you're both, I can't I'm sorry. Yeah, it hasn't been that long. Okay. But they, what I Kathy was saying yeah. though, if, if we had it, this West Lakeshore has a mixed bag of commercial and residential. Yeah. I would think residential would want to be rebuilt quickly. Maybe not so much for the commercial because it takes them longer to get the financing. Yeah. So I don't know whether we can address two different. Um, uses? I don't know. Yeah. yeah. Residential has surprised me. I can tell you of three properties that I know of that have been torn down and exceeded their time. Um, an interest, I say, I shouldn't say that automatically the result is that they cannot rebuild. I know of at least two properties who have entered into settlement agreements with the town. So basically they came to the town and said, hey, we're not gonna make it because of X, Y, and Z. Um, can we work with you to secure an agreement to give us an extension? Um, yeah, I think in here, you, you would think that property, residential or otherwise, um, but especially residential given the market, would be re rebuilt very quickly. We, I know of at least two that have exceeded their 10 years. And it's surpri it just mm. it surprises me. Um, it doesn't take much. You can look around and see even the properties that are um, in very poor shape. And you wonder, how do you, how do you hold on to that tax burden when 
should be very easy to resell and market, um, but it happens. It happens more than hmm. more than makes sense to me. Um, but yeah, I can I can name at least a few that have exceeded the ten years they were given um, from the time they tore it down. And this is an LS one too. What we're talking about is only for LS one. Right. Yeah. The so lake all, side. Right. That's the commercial. We really allow for residential. But there is some residential in that. No, not on that side of the road. On, on lake, the side? lake side? Yeah. yeah there's, on the LS1? Hmm? There's a residential. There's at least the first three or four properties after the park. Lower base Oh, side? yeah, yeah, okay. I'm just thinking way down. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. Right, okay. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Before yeah, you're you right. get to the boat park, <laughs> there's a lot more, too. Yeah. yeah. But they're on tiny pieces of land. That's right. That's right. They're yeah. Like uh, going to Airbnb anyways. Yeah. Of, um, questions and thoughts. Um, one wondering if there are any requirements for the land after requirements for the land after it's been um, demolished. Are they supposed to leave it in a certain state? Yeah. So technically, again, if they get a permit from us, we give them um, a sheet that talks about like an erosion control plan mm -hmm. um, that they're supposed to meet. Um, mm -hmm. Again, the, that's if they get a, a get a permit and we know about it, um, and that goes for any t regardless of where you are. But you obviously have to demonstrate more if you're on the lake side. So, yeah, they do have to show at least a, an erosion prevention control plan. Okay, um, and then the other one is I wonder if it's five years that might incentivize them to not demolish it because they don't know what's going to happen, and then you're stuck with this dilapidated building or you know a safety mm -hmm. hazard or problem or yeah some you know collapsing and um or you know who knows what else if they're they don't want to do anything because they're not sure what they're going to do so they're just going to wait to demolish it that would be one thought um, you're absolutely right on that that's why the hotel wasn't demolished they waited a while one year, so they just let it sit right you're right on track mm -hmm. on that. yeah so, and that happens in other cities and towns, too. So you're saying that in order to avoid having, like, dilapidated properties, maybe to extend it to 10 years, that would Yeah, I'm leaning towards the 10 years. Also, five years uh, seems too short to go through design, planning, approvals. Um, and if, like, funding's an issue, you know, that could take a few mm -hmm. years, too, depending on what they're trying to build. Um, so I think 10 years seems more appropriate based on what I know of the area and, and what the zoning is, you know, yep. what we've discussed here, a little information I have. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What are you thinking, Rebecca? Uh, I'm, I'm leaning towards keeping LS1 as 10 years. Yeah. And now that we have LS3 and 4 on the five-year plan, you know, see how it tests out over the period of time, see if we have any future issues. We won't, we won't know until yeah. five or six years down the road, but I think yeah. let's just keep it the way it is. Really? I need it, you know, Monty. I'm good at that. All good. Keep Thank 10, you. okay. All right, there you go. <clears throat> um, I think that the other reason we talked about five for the other ones, just in case you're like, what are we doing? Um, I think was to get it in line with the wastewater rules, which say four. So even though you tore down your building, you could only be grandfathered with your system for four years, plus an extension of one, which is how we get to five. Um, so I think it was to bring those in alignment, but they don't necessarily need to be in alignment. Mm -hmm. So if you take down your building and you don't rebuild within five years, you probably lose any grandfathered access to your system or use of your system. Um, but that doesn't mean you can't rebuild your structure. You probably just have to get in line with the new system requirements. Would that mean if you, after five years, you rebuild, but you had a failing system and the piece of property doesn't have enough room to put a regulated system on that you can't build because you don't have a septic system. Yeah. 
Because we do define a habitable structure, and that does include having a functioning approved wastewater so system. That alone keeps some properties vacant. Yeah. yeah. Well, there, there are lots of alternatives these days for wastewater. It could be like the size of a shed for a small house. And, you know, I, I know some of these lots are small, but I've seen really small, um, like raised bed systems that are um, for a maybe 1,200 foot house the size of a 10 by 12 shed or something. Yeah. And it's approved, by the, it's approved by the state? Yeah. Or the, yeah. the town? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hey, I think we received some testimony. We were talking about um, East Lake Shore Drive from um, a resident who shared with us that she wasn't sure she could do her system, but ultimately she could. It was just very, very expensive. Mm -hmm. um, better engineering, I guess, costs more money. Okay, I'm gonna leave it at 10. That's what I'm hearing. Yep. And we may ask that again here for LS2. Let me check. Perhaps not, but let me make a note to check that. Okay. And if I find that, we'll keep that one as well? Yeah. That may not have been in there, actually. I think it was put in there intentionally for the lakeside properties, but I'll double check. That predated me. Zipping, actually, maybe I should look at this here. Where were we? We're in seven. four. So I'm going to go ahead to 703. 7.03. Yeah. 703, oh, all it does is uh, remove Chapter 8 reference. Exciting. 704. E just removes that reference to chapter eight. Again, chapter eight of our code is where the uh, wastewater and potable water supply rules were referenced. Okay, 902 now. We're gonna come back to eight. Don't worry that I'm zipping by all that blue I was string. Say, okay. We're gonna come back, it's part of another one. All right, 902B, <coughs> one. So instead of saying that you comply with chapter eight, we're saying you gotta give us proof that you comply with the state rules. Nothing too interesting there. Uh, ignore this strike through. We're going to come back. <laughs> this is actually, this is all moved text, just, just so you know what this is. This is, we took all of the requirements. This is what you'll see under B, the reorganization of application requirements. We just moved them. We're not actually deleting requirements. <laughs> I was wondering about that. I was like, what? Yeah. A. Okay, same thing. Change from chapter eight. Nothing interesting there. 905G. Same thing. Um, changes there and then a strike through um, which deals with them proving that their water system is compliant. That'll now be regulated by the state. Um, let's look closer here. Again, this is just, I am on page 122 of the PDF. Um, under H, again, it's just changing from chapter eight to the state rules. Mm, 
907C. Should it say um, wastewater facilities for that last section? Instead of septic? I don't know if that, that Which really one? Matters. 905s? Last one. Yeah, where it says um, installed septic facilities must be built. Or, oh, I guess it's on site septic is the name of the that bolt, that number. So the number two. So I guess that makes sense. Just because um, septic up front was changed to wastewater, that's why I was questioning. Oh, that. do we still we have septic in here? Yeah, H2, it says on-site septic. Oh, Installed yeah. Installed septic facility. I'm happy to make that if you guys agree, just to stay consistent. Yep. Uh, H2. I think you're, you're still going to say on-site, though, right? Yes. Okay. Uh, we're just trying to get rid of the septic reference to wastewater. Okay. Where am I going? Ten fourteen. We do have somebody working on making these um, a little more user friendly. Ten o three. Ten. 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 Eleven. Ten. Twelve. <laughs> Thirteen and fourteen. Okay, so we are under seasonal dwelling units. Um, same thing, they had some requirements related to um, showing us that they're in compliance with our local wastewater ordinance. This has now been deleted and where necessary changed to a reference for the state permit. Um, to be clear, I worked through all of these um, with our Department of Public Works staff, including our town engineer and our designated wastewater officials. Um, so this is, it looks like more text rather than just a cross through, but basically says the same thing. Um, should you need to have such a permit for um, converting a seasonal dwelling unit or ex doing any sort of um, construction extension, you need to show that you've got said permit. Uh, 11.01 um, just removes local authority for water and wastewater. Um, we've changed all references from wastewater official to Department of Public Works staff because that title will be going away. and four. Um, this is just a rewrite of sort of what's below that's been crossed out. Um, but really effectively it just does the same thing. Just take some time to read that if you'd like. I had a question. Mm -hmm. Just I, have we gone past the 11.04 certificate of occupancy? I am on 1103. Okay. B, that is uh, page 172 of the PDF, or Article 11, page 2, if you're following that way. Okay. Ignore my formatting that I forgot to remove. So, I don't think there's any substantive change there. You can see that this is just really bulleted in order to read a little bit cleaner than the 
run on paragraph that existed before. Um, so 11.04 now. Um, um, this is some of our newest text. We added it in the last supplement. <laughs> um, now it's coming out. So this just says that we had the authority to review certain things prior to giving a CO for said structure. So if you were to get a permit for a new house, we do certificate of occupancies for anything that needs a permit in Colchester. Um, and this would say that we have the right to make sure you built your system the right way before we're gonna give you a CO. Um, it was important that we put that in here in our last update because most of that language existed in chapter eight and not in our development regulations. Um, so in order for staff to enforce that, it had to be here, but now staff won't be enforcing that. So, I mean, I, I just noted that it, it wasn't like a, a shall, just that some, they would have the right I mean, will the state have the right? I mean, it seems someone should have the right, you know, before yeah. the, the, the place is occupied, that someone has a right to especially inspect the system before it's covered. I'm not intimately familiar with their process um, into when they can have those rights. Um, it probably would not read anything like this if only for the fact that most communities don't require a CO or a certificate of occupancy for single family homes. Uh, it's pretty unusual here in Colchester that we do. Hmm. Um, so I'd be surprised if the state had any language that was similar just because it wouldn't be applicable in most parts of the state. Um, but I also would be very surprised if they didn't have language that says that they could inspect as needed. Probably just a different trigger point. Mm -hmm. um, I can't say that for a fact because I'm not a wastewater engineer or expert, um, but I would be very surprised having seen how other um, state departments work that they wouldn't keep this authority to them. It just probably wouldn't have that trigger point. So properties in Colchester don't need a certificate of occupancy. The owners of the people moving don't need a certificate, of, need some kind of inspection that they've done what they said they were going to do? So they do, but only from a zoning perspective. So if somebody were to build a new home, for example, um, they do need to get a CO. But what we are checking in a CO is, did you build what you said you were going to on your permit? So if you said you're gonna build a three bedroom house that is 90 by 25 and has a two car garage, well, we're gonna go out there and measure that you have a three bedroom house and it's 90 by 25 and it has your two car garage. Um, we're not gonna inspect a wastewater system. We won't have the authority to do that. Um, Sorry. I think we haven't necessarily been doing a lot of it before this, so I don't know that it's a big change. Mm -hmm. It just takes away any ability that we had to do that. Uh, most engineers are actually very good about getting in um, their certificate um, for that wastewater system. Um, I'm not aware of any issues that we've ever had. Um, but, Tim. Do you remember um, the family just before you came back the end that bought a house, I think it was a blue house on East Lakeshore Drive, and the, the septic fa failed like right after they um, bought the house. Um, and I think they were required to replace it with like a $40,000. Um, and, and, and I think with now the septic going in, that will be a new point, but it was just, I felt bad as consumers, they weren't protected. Yeah, and I don't think they ever would have been, even prior to this change. Mm -hmm. um, what this would have done is just said that your engineer has to give us the certificate um, for new construction. Um, but at the time of sale, we would never have had anything where we would have inspected. Mm -hmm. um, it really has to be on on the buyer of the property and I'm sure all kinds of crazy things were happening in the markets of the last few years where people weren't inspecting anything yeah. um, but the town never would have done that yeah and I don't think the state will either yeah. 
Okay. Okay. Let's see. Eleven. Oh, we're almost, ooh, we're at the end. Eleven o five a. Very very simple. Um, we don't need to expire wastewater permits because they're not ours. Yeah. Thanks for bearing with me as we scrolled through. Any questions on wastewater? Again, these all come with the blessing of our DPW staff. We worked through several hours with them um, to make sure that nothing was in here that was inaccurate or problematic for their enforcement. Um, okay. Um, let's go up to B. Um, there's really two parts of this that I want to highlight for you. One is a simple reorganization of application requirements. Um, there's a bunch of text that existed throughout. Um, and, you know, it's one thing when we get used to doing a review to find out what you're supposed to do when you submit an application. Um, but we are, are hearing from others uh, with very good feedback that the application requirements are sort of scattered. Um, so we put them all in a nice handy dandy chart. Um, yeah, I like that chart. It's helpful. Chart. I like charts. Chart. Shows up as red, it shows up as new. It's really not, it's just moved um, and reorganized. So there's nothing substantive in here. There is no new requirement in here that did not already exist. And I want to make that very clear. We're not asking for anything new. It's just a little bit easier to figure out, especially if you're doing combined application, what you need to show. So that's the first part of this one. Again, I really nothing substantive. It's an organizational piece. It had lived in the body. This is now in Appendix G. Okay. Also in Appendix G, um, you're probably like Kathy. You said we were just going to do wastewater. Why is there something else? <laughs> well, because I've been promising this one to the staff since I came here. So I'm hoping you'll let me deliver it as part of this supplement. Um, when we do any application for the DRB, we have to notify abutters. Um, it's time consuming and expensive. Uh, we have to put an ad in the paper, which we'll still continue to do regardless. Um, we have to find the abutters list, everyone who lives next to a property. We have to then draft the letter to them, um, fold and stuff envelopes um, to send to every abutter. Um, sometimes with certain properties, um, you'd be surprised and amazed at how many abutters you can have. Uh, you go over to the fort, we've had upwards of 55 plus. Um, we've lost entire afternoons of staff productivity, folding letters, stuffing them into envelopes, and mailing them. Uh, we've lost money on applications because the cost of mailing those, um, and then later decisions, which have to be sent certified, are very expensive. Statute allows us to transfer that burden to an applicant. Um, other towns are already doing it. Um, when I worked in South Burlington, we adopted this, um, put it into practice for several years, never had an issue. A natural question you probably have is, Kathy, how do we know they did it? Um, so we have a handy dandy certificate of service form that requires them to attest that they did it. Um, any good program that requires this will also spot check. Um, staff will, here and there, um, pick up an abutters list, give it a good read through and call someone on it and say, did you indeed get this? Um, but I think that this is, uh, you'll see there's a memo in your packet um, from Zach. Zach is our main staff to the DRB. Um, he's the guy who's mostly doing all of this work. I know that his time and intelligence can be better spent elsewhere. Um, so Zach and I are asking for your support in this amendment. Just a couple of questions. Like, um, I'm just thinking of someone who works a couple who work, they work 40 hours a week, so they can't come to the, the town offices. I mean, how do they, in terms of their time, um, and translating that into, you know, money, I mean, how do they find out who, I mean, the stuffing of envelopes, I think they should be able to do, but finding out who abuts their property. Oh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. We would help anyone with that, and we even help professionals. 
Um, it's not uncommon for um, a law office, a real estate office, an engineering office um, to give us a call and say, hey, I, I can't quite find this. Um, that part is actually one of the simpler parts for us. We run it off our tax map. We teach people how to do it in case um, they do it frequently. Um, some people will never probably have to do it more than once. You know, I'm thinking mm -hmm. of the person who's, um, you know, probably once on every agenda or once every couple of agendas, there's somebody who comes in who simply um, maybe building a garage that is a conditional use for some reason. Um, so we would definitely help them um, through those. Mm -hmm. um, what we see a lot of, though, are the applications where we have frequent um, frequent applications. Um, you get certain site plans in, say, the fort, for example, where tenants change, and that requires um, something. So you get you see the same people um, over and over again. Um, like I said, I have some experience with this. Um, most people are very happy to do it, or they mm. understand, even if they're not happy. Um, and they may already be doing it for other towns. Um, Can they do it online? Like the notice? No, it still has no, to be mailed. No. Can they find out who abuts? Yes. They can. Yeah. Okay. And we will train anyone who wants to do that. But, you know, your frequent flyers, for lack of a more elegant term, they know how to do it mm -hmm. um, using our, our online mapping. Uh, our online GIS map connects with our tax map. Mm -hmm. um, so it's only as good as the tax data, um, but it will bring up a list uh, for of abutters for you. Okay, great, thank you. Yeah. Um. Thank you, Rebecca. I think it's good. I think it's about time. <laughs> <laughs> Well, that makes me feel good. <laughs> I'm on board. I'm all good with that. Especially it costs taxpayers money unnecessarily, too. I get that. Okay. I am just wondering that um, if you're saying the interactive mapper is based on the tax data and what happens if it's not updated in time when someone's putting together the butters list. Maybe the address is right, so maybe it gets there, you know, but it's addressed to the wrong person, or potentially it could be the wrong address. How, do, how does that get addressed? I guess the same way it would now. I mean, we'd, they'd be pulling from the same list that we would now. Um, oh, so you guys wouldn't have anything different? No. Oh, okay. No, we would use the exact automatically. same. Yeah, I, I don't know about automatically. I don't know what the... I don't know how often things are updated. Um, I think pretty frequently. Um, I bought property in Colchester last year, and I know that I'm listed as the owner on it. I don't know how soon after it took. It, takes, it doesn't take that long. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. My daughter bought a piece of property. Yep. She's still listed. My neighbors sold their house, built new. It's already. And it got listed? Yeah, yeah. almost right away. So we would use the exact same. We'd okay. even use the public link. We wouldn't have access to anything different than okay. anyone else. Right. Yeah. Right. And hopefully they're getting the right information, but it's not unheard of. But there's, I just, just there's only so much you could do. Okay. Yeah. Wendy, what's up? I say yes. She said yes. There <laughs> you go. <laughs> All right. Congratulations to your staff. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Zach will be very happy. Um, you know, at some point, we're probably going to come back and readdress this. If you guys read this, you probably laughed or scratched your head a little bit. This, this information, I didn't want to overdo it in this supplement, but would you talk about, like, how big your file can be and ignore all that? I'm not trying to, <laughs> to fix everything at once, but just know that I know it's, um, it's outdated. We don't check whether the PDFs are 300 DPI. <laughs> We don't reject any that come in black and white. Um, yeah. We'll just ignore that for now. Okay. Moving on. Um, I think we covered all of C. Mm -hmm. um, but D, here's one that um, I want to talk about. This, this is one that definitely could use some clarity, and it is another one, again, that has been really frustrating to staff, 
property owners and applicants for a long time and I think it is just I think we can just tackle this one as part of the supplement somewhat quickly to either say yes or no um, and move on with this so I did print out what I think is a little bit closer up if you'd like one of the drawings that were included in that memo from Zach and that was this one. Um, Pam, did you have? Do you want one? Five, four D. There we go. So, oh yeah. Let me explain this problem. <laughs> so, let me uh, actually. I couldn't follow this drawing at all. I know, yeah, no, I that's okay. Trying to that's out okay. This drawing. I had to put something in there. It's <laughs> okay that you couldn't follow. I'm going to walk you through it now. Um, when I, it took me actually a minute to, to, to figure out the drawing, so, but it does make sense. Yeah, I'm uh, navigating to it here. That shoreline just kept changing. <laughs> so I'm going to bounce back and forth here between this memo from Zach and the actual text. He doesn't include the actual text in here, but I think that's important. Um, well, I guess he's got a part of it here. So in the shoreland district, okay? That's anything that's within 250 feet of the high water mark of the lake. So most everything, East Lake Shore, West Lake Shore, both sides of some of those goes pretty far, okay? Um, but especially to those properties within 100 feet. So we have language in here that says, you can increase or enlarge your residential structure so long as it doesn't increase the degree of encroachment within that first hundred feet. Okay, so there's two numbers. Shoreland is 250. Okay, so you could have a structure that's sitting somewhere in 250, partially or all of which is also within a hundred feet. Okay, where's my drawing? I'll pull that up. Let me make it bigger. Okay, so let's just start at the beginning. You've got a camp or a building you just don't like. It is, per this drawing, within 105, within 100 feet of the lake. So here's your lake at the bottom. Okay? Your whole camp is here. When someone comes in to tear that down and rebuild it, we look at this language that says, increase the degree of nonconformity. All right. Well, the heck does that mean? Historically, interpretation has varied. Um, our current staff interpretation is consistent among our staff, but does not please applicants because historical interpretation has somewhat been different sometimes. You have, I'm going to go here. So, what does increase the degree of nonconformity mean? We, because this 100 foot is a linear measurement, linear is how we have been interpreting that. We have people who are saying, okay, so let me see this. Here's your structure, right? You've got this amount, 20 feet, of your structure in that 100 foot. Well, someone comes in and says, I can have more as long as I don't go any closer. So if my old camp was here and it was only 20 feet wide, I can have 40, 60, 80, 100. As long as I'm not getting any closer to the lake. Their increase of the nonconformity interpretation is I'm not getting closer. Staff interpretation has been, but you're putting a whole lot more in that 100 feet than you have ever had there. Purpose of the 100 feet, just as a reminder, is to protect against adverse impacts to the water body, especially shoreland, the soil erosion, and anything else, okay? Pollution, especially erosion. Um, so um, this has been the cause of a lot of heartache for a lot of people about what you can do there. So we are gonna give you two options, one of which we like better than the other, and we're gonna tell you that we like it better than the other, but you can disagree with us. So, 
Again, our interpretation has been, you have a certain amount of sque square feet in that area where you're not supposed to have anything, okay? But we're grandfathering you. We're gonna, we get it. You had that home there, you've probably had it there, you bought it like that, you've probably had it in your family or someone's family for generations. You're entitled to that square footage. We do not believe that the regulation states or should state that you are entitled to more of that. And so hold the line approach here. Again, old camp. That's my dotted line here. Let me make that just a little bigger. Okay, old camp. Here's what you had. Again, some people's argument is, I'm not going any closer. I'm building a whole lot more, but I'm not going any closer, okay? That's how the uh, a property owner would want us to interpret that because it de definitely benefits them more. Um, in theory, not in language, what we are proposing is that you had X square feet, in this case, 20 by 15, and so you can continue to have that amount of square footage that amount of non-conforming structure in that setback, but no more. You could relocate it if you want. You could put it in such a place, so this old camp would not be able to build under that interpretation here because that increases the amount if this is your 100 foot line. And this threw me off at first because I'm like, why is it wavy, Zach? <laughs> um, it, and it's because our 100 foot line is not straight because it follows the high water mark, which is not straight, the contour lines. Um, so that's what this is here. If you were to move it, and some people have, you could expand that outside of that 100 foot as much as you want, but you still only get the same amount of impact, adverse impact, I'm arguing, in that 100 feet. Either way, we're begging you to clarify this. Even if you say, Kathy, you're crazy, we don't really care. Build away. Um, I think everyone would benefit from some sort of clarity. What you see further up in your memo, just to circle back away from the pictures, um, because we're not gonna put these pictures in the regulations <laughs> along with my video chat of explaining it, is to define in the definition section what degree of encroachment is. And so here you are. Um, enlargement of, let me zoom out just a little bit so you can see the whole thing. Enlargement of residential structures. Oh, that's the existing. Um, Square footage approach. Oh, sorry. We gotta go back to the draft. It's in the definitions. So many. <laughs> Degree of encroachment. So here are your two options. Can you make okay. that bigger? Yes. Now this is question one. I do reserve the right to ask you question two after you've discussed this one. So when you go to your proposed square footage approach, you're still allowing the structure itself to be larger. Because if, it, if this is right, you see he went from a 15 by 20 to a 20 by 20. As so. long as what you are adding to it is beyond that 100 foot mark. So they have to go back further in order to get that extra? In this case, what we see a lot of are people trying to square off what they already had. Uh, mm -hmm. That doesn't really show in the picture, but what we see a lot of is 
somebody has a little five by five deck that extends. This is this is very frequent actually. Mm. Um, that extends into that hundred feet, right? Then they tear down that camp and rebuild, and they say, "Well, I had this five by five deck. That got me that line. That got me to 44 feet instead of 48 feet. Mm. I already got that line. I'm gonna." build it out. So their new structure is what they had before plus them taking advantage of that distance they already had. Does that make sense? That's more common to what we see. Um, so this proposed square footage approach, the building, the new building will start at the back of the old building. That's where you're going to put your new mark. Um, it doesn't have to. Again, um, this does give somebody the option to enlarge because they moved it, but they don't have to. Mm -hmm. Okay. So again, if your old camp, what we see so much more is that the entire structure is within that hundred feet, right? Um, but they're they've got some little portion. Sometimes it's only five feet out of the 80 feet wide that their camp is. Yeah. So rather than, so now they've had this, they've had this camp that's in that 100 feet that's already impacting everything that 100 feet is meant to do. Um, but it's, but they, but it's what they have. They can't move it, right? Especially on some of the Lakeshore Drive. So we get that, and that's why this is in here. You get to rebuild that, even though it could have. It's very presence has it adverse impacts. But what we're seeing is I'm already this close. Here's my lake, right? I'm already this close to the lake and I've got itty bitty deck, right? Poking off here. They want to now say my new home, I had, I already established my line is here. That's my line. I can build anything I want up to that line. Staff interpretation has been no. Uh, but admittedly, the regulations just say degree of encroachment. Um, or, uh, but it doesn't really say clearly. Is that a line? Is it a linear approach? Um, or is it how much you are putting into the no go area? And you're saying appurtenance features includes appurtenance features. And is that described in the definitions? Like what, what's considered a so. feature? Um, yeah. So your two it options. says such as. I was wondering are in here. if there's like an all-inclusive <laughs> description of appurtenance feature. So the bottom one is the one, just to be clear, that we are recommending because it takes us a gross floor area approach. Um, so when we say you can't increase it, we're saying you cannot increase the gross floor area of your building that is already in that you shall not build zone. So if they had a deck, they could rebuild and they could put, instead of a deck there, put a structure going out that followed that deck. Yes. So if you already had the deck, you'd still get that square footage. Right, but now the square footage is of overhanging the lot. It could now go all the way down and have a foundation. Yes. Okay. But hold that thought for question two, because that's another question. Yeah, because this includes overhangs, as in roof overhangs. Is that or uh, is that yeah. what you're referring to? Well, so to? question two, let me preview this for you, is um, you have, your current camp is one story, okay? So pretty much everything on West Lakeshore and East Lakeshore is in this 100 feet. You have a camp, it's one story, the entirety of it is in there. You take down that camp, you rebuild it, even if you rebuild it exactly in the same square footprint. Questions that have come to us have said, all right, we know that we're in that 100 feet, can we put more in 100 feet in the form of a second story, third story, well, whatever the height limit is, um, or not. 
Um, we have interpreted that to date as saying it's really been a footprint issue. Um, and so we have allowed that, but I wanted to make sure that you guys are weighing in on that. This is LS3 and LS4 you're talking about. Anything within 100 feet. So it could also be up in um, Clay Point or LS1 and 2 or Mills Point or... So we addressed this for LS3 Island. Yeah. and LS4 already. We went through all that, right? So this is extending... This is anything in 100 feet. Different parts of town for Lakeshore. Lakeshore. Yeah, right. so shoreland overlay. Shoreland overlay. So that normally gets regulated by the state, but Colchester, we love delegation. Um, most places, most towns in the state defer to the state to um, regulate that. Colchester, we have our own delegation. We make this determination, but it largely mirrors what the state says. Yeah, so basically um, though, this is outside of our district for LS3 anyways, we already went through all that. So we're talking outside of that now. It still would include the, that. The heights. We yeah, through. I mean, this is mo as far as the heights go, um, it's mostly about clarifying for us. We would treat something in LS3 and 4 <laughs> the same as we would anywhere else as far as new livable space within the 100 foot setback. Right, so if the zoning allowed for a two story structure, yeah. 25 foot high ridge line anywhere in yeah. Colchester. We've got a lot of shoreline. Yes, we do. If they had a one story building, they could build up to that limit. Yeah, so that's if question had, two. If they had a three story limit, you could build up to a three story limit. Yes. Okay. Which Even within that good. overlay, um, we, can, we can circle back to that. So the first question is, how are you viewing this degree of encroachment? And to be clear, the state doesn't allow building at all if this was not um, a locally regulated um, area. You wouldn't be able to build in it at all. Um, so part of, part of the reason that we have delegation is because we recognize that we have so many properties and they all have their own history and some of them simply could not exist if they could not rebuild. Yep. Um, I, I shouldn't say that. The state would allow you to rebuild in your exact footprint only, um, but would not allow any increase. What we are saying is that you can have this increase as long as you are not increasing the degree of nonconformity. Well, my take before I saw any of this was I always thought here in Colchester, along the, the lake, you could rebuild on the same footprint. Same footprint to me means foundation wall. A deck that doesn't go all the way down and have, have a frost wall is a deck. It's attached to it, but your footprint is the foundation wall. To me, decks can come in and out all over the place, and that doesn't affect the structure. Unless, unless you're unless you're building a tree house where you have post, and then you can build out, I guess. But um, I've always interpreted what Colchester had was building on the same foundation footprint. And if the decks or overhangs are concerned, maybe that could be limited to not increasing it beyond the percentage that is currently in, on the existing property. I'm leaning more towards the square footage one because I think the, the linear one, I have never interpreted Colchester's regs to mean that. I have not either. However, some property idea. owners yeah. and some iterations of staff before me have. Hmm. One, one thing I've seen is where people build like on the footprint, you know, but it's like storage or it's a gym or something and then the second and third floor come way out. Like, so that's enclosed. That, that's that's yeah. why I think it's, it's no longer a deck. Or well, a porch. it never was a deck. It's just I know, a, but yeah, yeah there was um, never a deck. A whiteboard in 
I mean, I would think <laughs> yeah. that the structure itself can't increase over the existing footprint of the structure that was there before. Increase over. So if you had, I'm gonna, you know, you have a 15 by 20 ranch, you know, little camp, you could build up from that or make it smaller, mm -hmm. but not any bigger. But I would say you could probably make a little staircase going down because it's not really a structure. It's not a living structure. It's a way to get up and down mm -hmm. of your new two-story structure. Right. Um, that would be okay? You would be okay with that? I would tend to be okay with that because it's not part of a living area. It doesn't increase the living area. But I wouldn't want to see, I'd like to put a limit on that because I wouldn't want to see uh, the structure and then someone putting, you know, you've got 15 by 20 house, I wouldn't want to see a 15 by 20 deck off of it. I think so I would limit it to a certain percentage or something so tied to something. So let me give you an example here. If it already has to, a deck, do we limit? I'm not trying to pick on any in particular property, and these are terrible images, but humor me and pretend that you see what I'm showing you. Um, so much shadow, it's hard to, okay, let's pretend. Let's pretend. But you would. Here, put so we got this house here. House. Huh? Deck's already there, so we, we have the footprint of the house. But the deck that's already there, we would allow to put back on as. So see, that's where I'm kind of differing, because yeah. to me, the deck is an add on right. yeah. to the existing footprint. The deck is not. So even if it's not space. a deck, so let's ask this question first, and then we'll come back to whether the deck should count, because I think that's an excellent question. Um, so somebody's got this house. Let's pretend it's one story. I don't know. I'm not trying to pick on anyone. If anyone's watching this and like, that's my house. I'm sorry. Um, let's pretend that this is some sort of small addition here, right? Mm -hmm. So we'll pretend this is a one story house. They want to take down, rebuild. What we are hearing from a lot of people is they want to rebuild the whole new house up to this line all the way across. Right. Right. Whether it was a deck, whether it was living space, regardless, they are saying, this is my line, lady. This is my degree of encroachment all the way f the length of the home. Does that make a little more sense now? Mm -hmm. um, Rebecca is asking a very good question and says, is there a difference if does this square footage get to count even if it was simply a deck um, versus whether it's a living space? Right. So question one is, at it, no matter what, is there anything that should get them an allowance to build here? Assuming this is all in 100 feet, feet, and I'm pretty sure it is. This line here is my first question for you. Some would argue, I'm not increasing my degree of encroachment. I'm not any closer than I was before. But you're increasing the square footage in that encroachment. That's what I think is what we don't want them to do. Right. So we yes, have. Yes, you think so it's negative towards the lake. If you think. I think. I it's mean, I'm not saying I'm kind of yeah. thinking with you, but the, what they're going to. The claim is, is that, especially now that we have sewers coming, the septic won't be a problem anymore. Well, so, now you're talking just East Lakeshore and West Lakeshore. Right, but, right. But, yeah. So, um, but I get that. That's that'd be part of it. So the other guys will be set problems, too. Yes. So to me, both. if it's something, if you had raw land today, had nothing on that piece of property, you would not be able to build within that 100 mark, and that's to protect the water source, which is here is Lake Champlain, Mallets Bay. I would say if you already have an encroachment and at 100 foot square foot, you cannot increase it. I don't think it should be a linear line. It's just you cannot increase so your, your current uh, out of compliance encroachment. Yeah. Everything that's that on the foundation. Sense? Yeah, yeah. I, I, I understand that. Yeah. Well, can you prevent somebody from prior to? getting a permit, putting a big deck on the 
Well, that's, part, that's actually a huge part of the problem because people have historically built these decks, mm -hmm. especially on the back where nobody can see them. And so they are establishing lines that may only be three, four, five, ten years old that have never been allowed and it keeps leapfrogging. Um, and that's part of the problem. I mean, here's probably another good example where you have this old building. They might say, this is my line. Now look how close we are to the lake. This is my line. If I were to rebuild this, I'm building this. Yeah. And everything in it, because this is my line. I'm not getting any closer, staff. I'm not. Promise. But they're, they are increasing their encroachment. <laughs> that, is, that has been our position for the last year. Pam, you live on the lake. <laughs> You're awfully quiet over there. <laughs> we also see this is a, this is a this is a good one too. If you have a property that's not straight, you see this point. This is their closest point, right? Yeah. Their line, under some interpretation, is this. Uh, that, that's more encroachment. That's my point. They'll take that closest point and say that is my line. Okay, I agree. You gotta change. And it. again, I'm not just picking on this. We've seen applications come in. Um, from all around town, uh, Clay Point, um, there's a lot of rebuilds up there um, in that area. Um, where about Porter's Point, Mills Point, that area? All of them. Um, not as many in Mills Point. There's not a lot of rebuilds. And where they are, they are purely in the um, footprint, I think, just because of the topography. I don't know. The one on Bluff Road far exceeded that footprint. Did they go closer to the lake? Well, they just exceeded the footprint right across the whole lot. Yeah, I'll have to look. I don't know. But are they far enough away? Are they beyond the well, one? Right on, right on Same thing. Right on oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, they're probably uh, closer. 25 feet of foot from set back from the lake. Yeah. yeah, I don't know the history of that one. That was approved hmm. before Zach and I got here. We inspected it. Um, I don't think that was ever the intent of these regs was to build along the line of a linear line. So again, what I'm really hopefully asking from you, I wonder if I can see any of the ones up here. This is, is this one? This might be one of the ones, I don't know. I'm sorry if I'm picking on you and you're watching this. This might not be you. Yeah, I don't live on the lake. Eh? Well, let's just say like there's this one, right? Um, where they've got this point here, right? And so if you were to say 100 feet back and they're like, I'm already at this point, that means that I can go all of this. Um, no. And they're drawing their line that way, even though the entirety of this sits. Again, I'm sorry. So explain this new proposal. I, I guess I don't understand. If you had an existing 15 by 20 I was sitting here. Did you turn your mic on? Oh. Probably just gotta be closer. <laughs> if if you were you have a new camp that you have just moved away from the lake, which mm -hmm. is good, but it's bigger. How are you I, I guess I just don't understand if you're talking about the existing footprint. Well, that, I'm just talking about the existing footprint. I'm talking about this first one where they're saying the mm -hmm. encroachment. This the second drawing where they're taking the existing proposed square footage, they're still taking the example is a 15 by 20, which is, God, it's not very big at all, is it? No. It's about 300 square feet. I mean, it's. Yes. Um, <laughs> Forgive us our examples. <laughs> yeah, it's a tiny little, it's a tiny house. Um, <laughs> what that second diagram is showing is that you're taking that same 300 square feet and it doesn't have to be 15 by 20, it's 300 square feet, can be within that 100 foot setback. Okay. So you're not increasing the square footage. You might be changing the shape of it, uh, but the rest of the build out is beyond the 100 foot setback. Okay. Yeah, and so if, you, and the, if the zoning allows it, you can build it out to a certain amount. Okay. 
And you can go up, right? And as long as well, the zoning the area <laughs> allows it, yeah. So I, I prefer the square footage approach in order to get past question one. <laughs> <laughs> a straw poll? I do have questions about uh, <laughs> some of the yeah. other pieces, but. And you're trying to get this into supplement 45. Yeah. Okay. This yep. is this is so there's the, that's yes. it, right? So the goal is let's let's clarify this with the commission to see what the intent is. So that's that's the goal. And then how's the best way? So let's just say you guys are all on the same page and say, yeah, square footage, that's what we want. How's the best way to pop that into the regs? And what we've um, brought to you is we say shall not increase the degree of nonconformity. What the heck is the degree of nonconformity? That's now in the definition section. But degree of nonconformity or the degree of encroachment? Oh, degree of encroachment. I'm sorry. Degree of encroachment. Okay. Which is very important yeah. because we use degree of nonconformity elsewhere. And to cover our um, behinds on that one, we do say it only applies in the shoreland overlay. So anywhere else where degree of anything is mentioned, this is not the definition for that. Right. <coughs> But can they go back? Let's say they, they don't encroach in the 100 feet. Could they? It, it depends on the zoning. Not if they're still within. So here, right? Mm -hmm. Here's your old camp. Here's your 100 foot line. Oh. Right? This, yep. is, this is, I'll just call it the area of protection. Mm -hmm. Right? That's the idea. This would say, no, you cannot build I see. more in that 100 feet. This is a. An important area unless you already had something there you would be entitled to I think we have recognized it is very enti it's very important for people to keep what they have had and so where you have not camp, that. that's actually what was there before they yeah. there you would be allowed to keep it you'd be allowed to keep it yeah um, but you would not be able to put new square footage in that hundred foot sensitive area industries in you front behind that old camp on its foundation you could rebuild on the foundation yes right so we're not going to do the whole porch thing we're going to put a wording to kill that well let's let's talk about that okay. that's question two <laughs> so or so, three i don't so know how many we're up to it looks like the new camp is behind the hundred foot encroachment area is that right? In this one? Yes. On well, this would say that part of it is, right? So this is the argument we've seen. The majority is still But the majority the is new is new impact. Right. Within that 100 foot. Right. And that would not be permitted. Would they only be permitted? We are recommending it would not be permitted. You could decide you're okay with that. Mm -hmm. Our recommendation is that it would not be. So they'd only be able to build on the footprint of the old camp in a situation like this they could build on the footprint of the old camp mm -hmm. they could rebuild this in, in its entirety and expand it right expand the they footprint. could not expand here right what they could do if you're already tearing it down mm -hmm. is move it yep. to such a place that anything new yep. is outside of that protected area I see. well and there's part the, but the lower part below the 100 foot line is equal to the same square footage yes. as the old camp. Yeah. Okay. Yes. So is there a formula in terms of, what, let's say, what they could build beyond the old mm -hmm. camp's footprint? Yeah, so we have coverage limitations just like you would have anywhere else mm -hmm. on your lot. Um, we have the other setbacks. I mean, this doesn't account, you know, tell you where the new ro where the road is. Do you have to be set back from that? So mm -hmm. it apply, just apply in the same way that anything else would. Mm -hmm. um, but what I think what's important to note is that no matter what, you can at least rebuild what you had. Mm -hmm. um, and we wouldn't want to change that. Right. At least staff is not recommending right. to change that. So that brings up the next question. Can you build up? Can you build up? And then your question, I think of like, let's just say this was the old camp. This is, let's just pretend for the argument of this talk, this was the old camp. And this is your deck. So I think the question you've raised is, do you get this as well? If this was just an, an overhanging deck. I would say you get the deck back, but the foundation is the footprint. That's what's encroaching 
on that piece of property. You have the deck and back, but you could not convert this deck to living space. Is that what I'm hearing? That's, Does that, that sound accurate? That's okay. what I'm saying. Let me write this stuff down. I would say anytime you have to dig into the ground and have living space there is an, encro an additional encroachment. You have a deck that's overhanging. It's not really encroaching on that property. It's so not you're saying new living space or anything with a foundation wall? Does that sound? Yeah, like that's what I'm. That's how I'm defining it. Um, development with. I think the tricky thing with the deck is that it's going to have some foundations for the posts. But it's not a living space. Right. And then you have a um, hard, impervious surface. You know, maybe, maybe there's gaps between the, the boards and stuff, but in protecting the water quality of the lake, you want, you don't, you want less impervious surface within that protected area. So if you're adding, if you're considering the, the if you're not counting the deck, that's what I was question why I was questioning impertinence features because it's kind of a little bit of a gray area and are we back to the definition here? I'm you know, sorry. are we just including footprint, you know, foundations, hard foundation surfaces or overhangs and a lot of regulations they're considering hard surfaces, gravel, roof overhangs. Um, so how far do we want to go with limiting? Well, are there other those regulations on, on that, Kathy? About which part? Water, of well, talk, we're basically talking about water runoff. Yeah, I mean, well, we hear a lot of um, from people, which frustrates me. Um, even though I'm, I don't pretend to be a hydrologist in any way, is that a deck is not impervious surface. Um, we heard a lot, our staff interpretation is to say that we treat it that way. Um, and I think that the state does as well, anyone? In yeah, that's kind of a great area, I don't know. Um, you know, people sure. say water runs through the deck boards. It does, but a lot of people will put furniture and rugs and even a roof over their deck. Mm -hmm. And that makes it impervious in every way. But the ground below, it isn't covered. I mean, yeah. Yeah. But I have a deck on top of a deck, and we put plywood under the top deck. Right. So now all of a sudden, you're impervious. It's impervious. Right. And <laughs> but so, the ground's not impervious. I think that's where the. I think right. that's where the. But is the water getting is. to it to be treated? Yeah. It's, if it's you creating have, an impervious, mm. so it's not allowing the water to get to the ground, essentially. Yeah. So if you have a cantilever deck in some way, and you've put something, in, and oftentimes people will because they want that patio roof, too. down at yeah. the bottom or something, right? Or I don't know. Or they want some lawn furniture there that's got shade. Um, they will put something on that deck to make it so water cannot penetrate through it to the, the ground below. This is, we're talking about existing decks. So we give it back, we give the deck back that was already there. So the question I've asked and what I've heard so far from Rebecca is if somebody does, I need a whiteboard. <laughs> um, I wonder if I can find a drawing tool in here. Yeah. Um, if you it's have like a note, notes, notepad or something. Notepad. Right. <laughs> Let's see. Actually. Paint. Yeah. I don't think I've played with this since I was in high school. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Let's see. Bear with me. Um, try not to use the spray can. <laughs> All right, so. Hmm. I find it hard to draw three hands. <laughs> Water, lake, okay. Um, this is going to be preserved too for posterity, right? So you have your. Let me 
make it bigger. Marker. <laughs> oh, oh, wow, okay. <laughs> you have your house. That's not much. Right, and then. You have I'm using here. You have a nice little deck over here, right? Deck house. You have this deck. You're tearing down your rebuild line. And again, we'll assume this is built into a hill. They often are. You have your rebuild line. Is it just where the, the heavy line is? What happens here? The question is, there's three questions. Do you get And I think the question you've already answered is, do you get new house all the way up to this line? Question one. I think I'm hearing from folks, no. No. No, no new house up to that line. No, right. Nope. Okay. No, same boat. Question two. Okay. Go to green. This area here. Can it be rebuilt as a deck? Can it be rebuilt as living space? I would say rebuilt as a deck, minimum. You had a deck, we let you get your deck back. Was it living space? That's the next part. And question three, just because I'm full of questions. If you take advantage of the square footage thing, and that's a, 80 square foot deck, does that 80 square feet move with you in any way? Does that count? So this so, is. So when the, the, basically you're asking like this diagram, if you had a big fat deck off of here, do you get that big fat deck back? Yeah. that you would include it in the square footage. I mean, it just seems like you could put a deck all around the entire building if you wanted to, and that would count too. That's the trick. So, the, so that deck with an X in it right now sits there. Mm -hmm. That's existing. So we let you rebuild on your little foundation. Mm -hmm. You're perfect. You can rebuild your little deck right there, so you're perfect. Are we back. Square one. But now you want to move this back. Are you are we going to allow that little square part of the square footage when you move back? Is that right? I think that's the question. It goes with the building, the square footage. So part. yeah, two questions. One, let's pretend that you rebuild you're gonna rebuild this exact footprint, right? You're building this house just like you had it. Yep. You're gonna make an argument that this is part of your footprint and this can become your new master bedroom. There's no foundation for that. This is a deck at this point in time. There is no foundation wall. I suppose there could right. be. There has to be something supporting <laughs> yeah, the deck. Yeah, we've got support the posts, support we've got posts. That, are we going to are we going to allow you to close it in now and become a Does it does is this your footprint is the question. So do so, we do we then say here's your footprint it's everything that existed? So I get that part. 
So that's I think a question. We're all on board with that. We all well, say. I don't know if I've heard the answer, but uh, that's the question. We, we're on board with the foundation part. The foundation is the footprint, the, the foot. square footage footprint. Correct. It does not include a deck. It doesn't, doesn't include the overhangs or the decks. I think that's what we're arguing about right now. We're discussing, not arguing. Well, that's the yeah, question. <laughs> that's the question she's asking. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've asked a lot of questions. I'm so sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, the deck's separate from that issue because it's not considered, I think the way we look at it, it's not considered part of the structure. But the question is that you're saying is that this, is, this would be the, um, do we allow that to happen? You build a deck, just a regular deck. Well, they, they'll come to you and say, can we build that into a, a new bedroom? They'll say no, because it's not permitted, correct? So I don't know historically what has happened. Um, I believe, though, and again, I think clarity is so important. I believe that there's precedence for saying this is part of your footprint, as long as it was permitted and has some, or existed more than 15 years, has some sort of staying power, that that has historically been included as part of your rebuild footprint. So your new build is the solid line plus this mm -hmm. line. Whether you believe that should be true or not is entirely up to you. I think either way, so in, and footprint we can make could it clear. Be enclosed or not enclosed? Well, I looked when Rebecca brought it up. We don't have a definition of footprint. <laughs> I wrote a note. Okay, maybe we should. Yeah. Maybe what I'm going to see come back to you is some definition of footprint. Yeah. Um, cool. But philosophically, policy wise, um, what do we do with this space in terms of a rebuild? What I'm hearing from Rich so far is somebody who's put something out there is that he would at least like to make sure they at least get a deck back. I don't think he's weighed in yet on anything more. Yeah. Does that sound fair? Yes, absolutely. So you're thinking. But if they knocked everything down and rebuilt it, he does not want them to lose at least the ability for a deck here. Is that accurate? But it couldn't go any further out than where it was before. Yeah, your square footage is what it is. And could not get wider, too. Correct. So even if it was just a deck, you don't get to make your deck. Well. Let's say it was a hundred by uh, using a hundred square feet. So if it was a ten by ten, you could make it five by twenty if it works better for your plan. And doesn't go closer. And doesn't get any closer. Yeah. But as long as it doesn't increase in size. So just to be clear, if there was no existing deck there, you're saying they could not build one. Correct. Yeah. Okay because they'll have to get closer to the lake. Mm -hmm. So we want to eliminate everything that goes out towards the lake as far as new construction is concerned. Okay. So if they, they want that deck, they can push their whole, according to this, they can push that whole camp back, go at it. Yeah. You know, as long as they push it back beyond that 100 feet, they can get, it, they can get that deck. But they've got to go right behind, behind that 100 feet. So you only want to give it to them in this particular case right here because it was already existing. Exactly. Okay. If I had a camp, I get that. Rebuilt, and I go to the town and I say I had a nice little deck. Mm -hmm. so, no. So would you support something that said you get the same square footage of living space? Let's just say you're moving it, yeah. and the same square footage of appurtenances. Am I saying that right? Appurtenances. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Sure. Yep. Yep. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yes. So that's one option, I suppose, right? You get the same square footage of living space, the same square footage of appurtenances, as they long have, as it's permitted, right? It permitted. Right. If it's out of compliance and was never permitted and they have a huge deck, no, they don't get away <laughs> right. with something. That's an important point. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for sure. 
but you're making a very strong distinction between your footprint being a living space footprint and a deck footprint. Does that sound fair? This is also for like we're kind of grandfathering features in and a lot of these decks may not have been permitted because there weren't permits is back then that's a possibility yeah right? it's not uncommon and we we do struggle with it a lot uh daily when someone's like oh, i've had this here for 50 years yeah. and we're like hmm, kind of looks this color i don't know <laughs> yeah. uh, but then again something that could be five years old could look like it's 40 years old stuff yeah. weathers pretty quickly um so yeah it's, it's going to be hard I mean, I don't know how many properties there are that have huge decks off towards the lake that are in the 100-foot setback. I don't know whether it's a big problem or not. I don't know. Yeah, I, I think, again, what we see mostly is people wanting that actual distance. So they may have only a small. What's happening, at, what has happened a lot is that there's a small deck. Usually it's a landing because that's how they get down. They come out on a landing. It might have a chair or two, but it's usually not very big. Yeah. But that's how they take the stairs from their living space here to the water, to the, yeah, to the, the beach, beach front. Yeah. And so that has created some sort of line here. And at rebuild time, knock down rebuild, they say, this is my footprint. But they lose their way to get down to the, to the lake. <laughs> yeah, they, they get pretty creative. They'll stick it on the side now. They'll, they're willing to come out the front and yeah. go down. Yeah, um, I, th I think that how defeats the whole idea uh -huh. of keeping the encroachment and the 100-foot setback as small as possible. I think it defeats the whole idea of protecting the lake. Yeah, I do feel very strongly about that pink line that I've shown. And I'm willing to argue it, but other than that, <laughs> um, I'm feeling... I say that to people, too, and they think I'm crazy. That's where I was thinking. No, I think we definitely have to... Uh, we just don't let them get closer. Gotcha. Have a better definition. Yeah. So. <laughs> I don't think we answered all your questions, though. Do we add more questions? Is the question. <laughs> Are there any other features besides <laughs> decks? Or we're just... Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. <laughs> and if it is just the deck, we have to make I think sure this we is define the only what that is and that it doesn't have, you know, concrete well, or foundation below it or if it's not over, a over, deck. overhang. Yeah, could be I a think patio. the definition of footprint right. would be important. How do we define that? Footprints? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, because we, we say you can rebuild in the same footprint, and I think it's... It's never been controversial because we've had a very, I think, liberal definition of that to date. Um, it's up to you guys to tell me if that's been too liberal or not. I'm not saying I agree with it. What but stops? At least it's been this. consistent. What stops someone uh, having a, a stone patio going out towards the lake within that 100-foot setback? That's so impervious to me. I mean, yeah. that, that it is impervious. But yeah. I mean, is that an issue? Yeah, so no no patios either within the 100 feet, no okay. new. So that's um, already in there? Yeah, we that's track pretty close though. to the state shoreland okay. regs, so they would not allow that. Um, that's what I've been doing on my phone, by the way. I'm not oh, are you looking, looking at, at the shoreland protection. The shoreland. <laughs> um, and something, since we're already talking about the shoreland, something that you will hear, not for this supplement, but you will hear it in two weeks when we meet with the DRB. Um, they struggle with the shoreland stuff. There's something in there about, um, about cutting trees in the shoreland and new trees and something about, like, they have to be randomly placed and they're like what the heck does that mean how do you randomly place trees like um it is a difficult uh, regulation to follow <laughs> so they're going to be bringing that up to you in two weeks because it's something that has been really bothering them so not the last you'll hear of shoreland okay 
Thanks. So one thing, okay, let me see if I can summarize us and get us, ordinarily I'd be like, why don't you think about it? We'll talk about it again in two weeks. Um, I think what, I, what I'm hearing consistently is you don't get to build out to that pink line in any case. Mm -hmm. your, your degree of encroachment is not, you've already gone to 40 feet instead of 80 and you can keep going to 40. That makes sense. Um, However, um, and you do like the square footage approach. If, if you've had 1,000 square feet in that 100 foot, you can keep 1,000 square feet somewhere. Footprint. Footprint. Um, but now we are asking ourselves, how are we saying? If you had 1,000 square feet, they might say, I had 1,100. Do they have 1,100? Does this example have 1,100 square feet? When you say 11, are you mean you're counting the deck? Yes. It's not living space. So one option is to simply say you, you don't get that at all. You have 1,000 square feet that you can rebuild. One option is to say, put this in the two buckets, like I brought up. This will be tricky, but I think we can do it if you want to. You get the bucket of living space, foundation wall maybe being the definition, we'll have to work our way through that. And you get the bucket of appurtenances, and you can keep that provided it has existed for longer than our statute of limitations of 15 years and or you actually got a legal permit for it. But it can only be kept as that same bucket, as an appurtenance. Same square footage. Same square footage, not any closer. Okay. And you can't take that number, whatever it is, and convert it to new living space with a new foundation, foundation wall. wall. No. Yeah, um, I agree with that. Because um, you could have a shed or a gazebo, and you should be able to, you know, keep or rebuild or have those. So you would not be. support. You know, take red here. This is fun. Gazebo is another question. <laughs> yeah, I just thought of that one. <laughs> okay, let's see if there's, there's been a lot of discussions about that. Red. So a new house. Pardon the line. That's actually meant to follow. Ignore the fact that it doesn't. <laughs> new house does not get to be here. The one that's going back beyond the hundred. Is that what we're talking about here? That yeah. would not be a new no. foundation. So line. I'm like, I don't need a deck. I'd rather have a master bedroom worth so much more. That's my new house. Ignore this. It was a mistake. <laughs> I thought that was the garage. It's the yeah. garage. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> they can keep the garage, garage too. That's yeah. part, that has a foundation under it, even though yeah. it's not as deep. They so can't have this does not become the new footprint of the house. Is that what I'm hearing? Right. Right. Yeah. Right. That's that's right. You can put a deck back here. Yeah. Yep. You do not get to make this your new layout. No. New foundation wall. Correct. New upstairs, downstairs, third floor, fourth floor. No. And it doesn't right. extend it, the width of the house. It doesn't go. Right. Just because so the, the line ends. Right. So that's, that's a no. That's a no. <laughs> Red. No. OK. So new. Let's go with that. I'm so out of colors. It's a happy color. We'll go with blue. Fat blue. Okay? Mm -hmm. So you're rebuilding it. You can knock it down, rebuild it. You get this. You can get the garage too. <laughs> oh, yeah, and the garage. I always forget the garage. Um, and. That's not bigger. Let's pretend it follows it, but I needed you to see it. The same deck as a deck. I'll put lines on it. Those are your boards that you're not going to put a carpet on. <laughs> and in this particular case, the deck is just because they had it before. Correct. Okay. I, I'm good with that. And I reason. And if they didn't have a deck, they don't get a deck. Get a deck. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But mm -hmm. if they if they had and if you moved eight, it if they had four acres of land. 
they could build a bigger house behind the 100 foot mark. Yeah, so, uh, and that's the one I think that's represented in the drawing you have. So, right. Right. they okay. could also, let's go back to blue, that one. They could also take this thousand. They could even go probably nice and long here, as long as they don't exceed a thousand. Be beyond that yellow line, yeah. Hmm. And have a big old place. Okay. Yeah. And a reason for all that. And as long as this is not larger than this. Yep. And why we want that is because we want to protect the lake, as I'm sure they do. And the property. since I'm getting good at this. So no, I don't know that that would be allowed in the Shoreland Protection Act, though. In the 250 part, you mean? Yeah, the state regs. The state. It's not Act 250, it's the... Right. Um, so we don't follow the state regs. We follow our own regs. Okay. Which are closely modeled after, but you don't have to actually meet them. So we've replaced them with the oh, language we're we have here. we're promulgating authority for Shoreland Protection? What's that? If you if you live in Colchester, you don't have to get a shoreland protection. Nope. I didn't know that. Um, hmm. You do <laughs> That's not. That's why this okay. is uh, where we're at. So <laughs> you do not. <laughs> Got it. Well, yeah. What about the rest of that 150 feet? That's important <laughs> to the quality of the lake. So that that's in there. Yeah. Okay. Um, at some point, if you would like to revisit that, I'll leave that up for you guys. But <laughs> um, so just to finish this off, even if you moved it, you can still get your little deck. You still get your hundred feet of deck. Yep, gotcha. Yeah. Save looks this. Dinky I'm going to look at this tomorrow and be like, what was I doing? <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going to drop it on Zach's desk and say, here. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. And more than likely, if you're starting from scratch and moving it back, you'll probably fix that deck so it works out well. Save this lady. Okay. Anyone disagree with how we've summarized this? I think I've heard. All good. I'm good. Okay. I'm good. So, here's the plan. The next meeting, hopefully, I'll have prettied this up. Um, we're going to start the meeting with a joint meeting with the DRB at six. I don't know how long we'll go, but we're going to have food and conversation. Um, Mostly we're going to hear from them. I'll put an agenda together. We'll dismiss them at some point. Let them go home. And then we will review this. Hopefully I'll have text to match. Um, everything else seemed pretty straightforward, so I don't think we need to review the wastewater stuff again, except for the small edits that I noted. Um, I do want to make sure that this represents what you want it to do. The hope is to warn it for a public hearing, but I want to make sure that we don't do that if you don't like the text. It's more critical to get that right. Yeah. Yeah. I have to say the two definitions yeah, of your were, degree of encroachment, ors. I found very confusing. Okay. I had a. I've read them over and over again trying to figure out, okay, what's the big difference between these two, but I mean, you've, you've, you've defined it, but it, uh. okay, I'll work on that. Yeah. I think the idea, I think they were meant to be ors. The top one is if you did the hold the line approach, which you've said that you don't want to do, so ignore it. Right. Don't look at the top one again. 
The bottom one is you're meant to like sort of plug it in. If you don't increase the gross floor area of the principal building, we'll have to rewrite it. Mm -hmm. And any appurtenances, pertinences, such as decks, porches, overhangs, and stairs, in existence on a lot, than 100 foot setback of the mean watermark. So it's meant to be like a, a, a plug-in, right? If, as long as you don't increase the amount of gross floor area. But I don't think it reflects what you talked about tonight, so I gotta fix it anyway. Do you need to have like the permitted it or, you know, beyond the statute of limitation? Yeah, I gotta figure it out. Mm -hmm. Got two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yes, hopefully it'll reflect in some way everything you've said. Um, it won't look just like this, but the idea is that when someone says, increase the degree of encroachment, what is the degree of encroachment? We can plug it in. Well, the, Amy also brought up a thing about the gazebo. <laughs> I, I know it's come up in other towns whether a gazebo is a encroachment or not. Is that a pertinent feature? Attached or unattached? Unattached. Detached. Detached. S you know, sitting out, you know, it's a little picnic area, you know, you have a little gazebo covering your picnic table. Well, I think, I think that gets picked up largely by the floodplain regs. That's looked at as a shed in town, right? Yeah, so I don't think you'd be able to build new ones. I don't think you need to be under, build ones, but if you had an existing one, yeah, are you but I don't allowed think can, to keep it? I don't think so. It's come up in other places. I, I mean, it's. But I'm thinking more from the, from a floodplain perspective. I think because once you get past, you're probably. So just to put it in perspective, along East Lakeshore Drive, the back or front lakeside corner of a lot of those structures sort of hit the floodplain mark? Yeah, I'm, I'm not thinking of East Lake Shore Drive. There's other properties. There's a lot of properties on the, around the lake. Okay. Um, and the house may be, yeah. you know, not in the 100 foot setback, but the gazebo could be, you know, a little, I wouldn't call it a picnic area, but you have a little place to sit. You have a little roof over it. It's a gazebo. So, okay, so we're thinking it's out of the floodplain, but within the 100 foot. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> you need a permit for everything. It's like a shed. You need okay. a permit for it. Yeah, we would treat it like a shed. Okay. Like, Wait, I asked that a long time ago. <laughs> I got the answer to. How about a pergoda? <laughs> Same thing. <laughs> well, are you putting canvas over the top or not? <laughs> um, let me. I haven't heard that come in, but I will look into that because I think if the whole goal is to clarify and know and make it. Yeah. Predictable. We should include whatever They're you popular. want to include on it. I mean, you they can are. buy nice ones. Costco anywhere. It's real structures. Or do it yourself, you yeah. That you can build up yourself, yeah. yeah. I mean, that's a new thing. Yeah, my guess, just knowing what I know about sort of the history of the Shoreland delegation and why Colchester took it on. Um, so just a very quick history. Um, it's a little bit different than wastewater regulation delegation where we take the state wastewater rules and keep them and enforce them. Uh, with the shoreland delegation, we took oversight. We created our own rules and we had to have them reviewed by the state. So we could make them different and we did. It's well predated me. Um, as long as they were approved and they were by the state. So they do look different. Mm -hmm. um, from what I know about the history of it, a lot of it was to protect existing homes in that 100 foot um, because it was deemed very important. Um, and that was the basis of a lot of that conversation. Pam, were you around? You can, you can kick me if you're like, that's not it at all. Um, but that was so much it, I don't know 
how much thought or even consideration was given to those types of structures because that wasn't the priority. Um, so it may have been that those things just default to whatever they would have been under the state rules. But I'll look into it. That would be, be interesting. I don't know. If you came to me today and said, Kathy, I want to rebuild my gazebo, which is sitting out on the bluff, um, can I do it? I'd say I'll call you back. Mm -hmm. So I have a nice little gazebo out in a rocky bluff, you know, it's yeah. a flat rock. Yeah, I just want to rebuild it. <laughs> yeah. No, I guess I could see that coming in. Yeah. I, I, yeah. I wouldn't blame you for asking. Um, I'll find out. I don't know. Okay. But I've got a note. Um, that is all I have on these items. But I'll turn it back over to Rich to ask Tom. Want to sit here? Share. Mm -hmm. All good. All right. So we're all good on that. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> Meeting schedule. Meeting schedule. Okay. Um, we are meeting in two weeks with the DRB. We just covered that. Um, I have to look at what your warning schedule will be. Um, it might be that I'm, rec and I can connect with Rich specifically about this, but it might be that if we have a public hearing at the end of February, that you might want to take your first meeting off. Um, if you don't have anything from the next meeting to continue, um, it'll be tough to bring you something in between because I'll be working on, I think you'd have a meeting just for the sake of having a meeting. Um, so my recommendation is if you continue, if you have a meeting two weeks from now, you are not ready to warn a public hearing, we'd want that, we'd want that early February meeting. Uh, I don't have the date in front of me but that first Tuesday in February. Um, if, however, you like whatever everything you see two weeks from now and you say, let's warn this for a public hearing, I'd recommend that you have that late February meeting and not have that first February meeting. Right. I realize that means you don't know for sure until two weeks from now, but. It's in my calendar anyway. Yeah. Dude, does someone have a calendar? Well, um, the first Tuesday is the 7th, February 7th. Yeah. And then February 21st would be the third okay. Tuesday. So Thank you. put those on our calendar, and then we may take one off. I would hold them both, but yep. know that you'll probably have one and not the other. OK. Because if, if two weeks from now on the 17th you say, we're not ready, we want to see this again, come back to us February 7th, you won't have a public hearing on the 21st. Okay. You'll have it in March because we need enough time to warn it. So hold both dates, but plan on only attending one. Okay. Um, so we're good there. So I jumped over five. I just realized that. I don't know why. I, but. It's your meeting. Yeah, I guess. <laughs> so if we're good on that one, let's get to five. Because first we have a letter from the town of Colchester. That one's pretty straightforward. Yeah. We're happy with that. That happens before our supplement? No? That's the letter about the... Yeah, that's the just the letter about... So what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. So what about this letter from David Cohen? Um, town management asked that I just give you guys that as an FYI. Um, there are, as you know, quite a few seasonal dwelling units throughout town. Um, some people overstay their welcome, overstay their allowances. Seasonal dwellings run April 1st to October 31st. You're supposed to vacate by November 1st. Um, like anything, enforcement of that can vary depending on staff resources. Sometimes there's just other things going on. Sometimes even if we have the time, it is a process to warn someone this letter is from somebody who's frustrated that somebody has overstayed. Spoken with Mr. Cohen many times. He's very nice, um, but is very frustrated by this and wants the town to do more than we have been. And his more, per this letter, 
is to utilize the water department. From what I understand, the select board said, we don't control the water department or the water district, fire district two. Um, we don't set their rules. You need to take it to them. Um, I'm not asking for any action from no. you. Well, I'm, I'm just, just sort of. As a planning commission, we really don't have any, mm -hmm. other than listening to this story, we can't really do anything about it. It just sounds inequitable. I don't think so. Though it just sounds like some homeowners somehow have a relationship with the water department or district where they leave it on or they don't. You know, it just seems very unfair to me. And I just, I just am, for one, I am just really an enforcer, you know, because it's just unfair. You know, it shouldn't be people that have a relationship, you know, that get some kind of benefit that other, other citizens don't get. Yeah, I mean, and again, I'm not, I, I've talked with the fire district from what I understand, the few exceptions that they have made, um, just by way of example, there was, I mean, COVID I think had some mm -hmm. impact on it. There was a resident who was um, a Canadian citizen um, who contracted COVID the Take end COVID of time. October, couldn't cross the border until he had a negative PCR test. Yeah. It was stay in his home or stay in a hotel yeah. with COVID. Well, that sounds reasonable, um, you know, in terms of that. So I think that they, they'd they like to retain their ability to make those decisions. Beyond that, I mean, I don't know how, I don't know how organized it is. It could be extremely organized. It could be extremely not. Um, there's also, you know, an argument about whether or not, you know, using the water district as your enforcer makes a lot of sense. I've had this conversation with some folks. Um, so you own a seasonal unit. We say that you cannot live in it. We don't say you can't visit it. So you own a camp. I'll put myself as an example out there. I own a camp. I want to go over in February and paint. When I'm done painting, I want to wash my hands. Can Just I do that? Just go to the bathroom, that's all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so I, can I use the restroom? Can I use the restroom while I'm there? Can I wash my hands? Um, so you turn the water off, you remove that ability. We have a lot of people who do renovations over those winter months. Do you want to remove that? And, and I'm not making any argument whatsoever, just so you know I, I'm not actually painting. Um, but I think it's a fair consideration that might factor into whether or not using the water department, not that it's your call, but using the water department is the appropriate way to enforce. So there's just, there's just things to think about. Good news is there's nothing you guys can do about it. Correct. <laughs> so read the letter. Yeah. Well, we can. Not your circus. Move on to the minutes. I need a motion. Oh, there was something minutes. in the minutes. Oh, okay. Well, you can make oh, the motion, then we oh. can fix it. Oh, and I did have to change the printed copy you have in front of you. Yep. It was slightly changed because the agenda item said the wrong month in the title, but not in the text. So I think it said September or October. In the, pr in the one that I emailed you, item, I don't have a copy here in front of me. Okay. Wherever it says minutes, approved minutes, in the minutes, mm -hmm. it had the wrong month. I fixed that for the copy that you're signing. Okay. You approved the minutes of November 6th. Gotcha. November 1st. Oh, November 1st. Yep. Yes. Okay. It so had said September. Oh, it still okay. says September here. Oh. I thought I swapped it. This one says the right one. Sign this one. Okay. <laughs> so that, yeah, let's sign the right one. Um, <laughs> hang on, we'll wait. Do you need another minute, sir? No, no, okay. I just want to just ahead. say that I thought during that discussion, you know, I had talked about addressing possibly um, to relook at residential development in the con commercial district. I thought we were going to have that conversation or relook at that at some point. Yep, we still are. We still are, yep. okay. I We're just didn't see it This in. is just to get 45 and get the gotcha. wastewater deal. Okay. Yeah. But yeah, we're still Did old. you want to add it? I mean. No, I don't want to add it as long as we Forgive my happen. minutes. I'm okay. supposed to write things as we go. <laughs> but then I talk and I don't write them. Yeah. 
It's fine. I just want to come back to that conversation at some point. Yep. I don't want to even vote it in. But yeah, I can, I'll make a motion that we approve the minutes okay. of. Get a second? December 6th. Second. You want me to second? I'll mm -hmm. second the motion. All right. Discussion? Discussion. Let me see if it's in this page. I don't here. think you can sign it, but you can probably <laughs> second it. <laughs> Did you want to make a change? I thought there was something I read earlier, but I can't see the my finger on it. You could also put them off for two weeks if you want to. It wasn't a big deal. I think it was just like a wording or something. But we're going to be readdressing it all anyway. So. So we're good? We're good. We're good. <laughs> so uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 Motion. All in favor? No. We're good. We're all with it. Nothing else left? And then I'll make a motion to adjourn. Need a second? I'll second that. All right. <laughs> there you go. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion dismissed. We are adjourned.